What's good guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the Sony a7S III, which I personally think is the absolute best camera for filming anything concert, nightlife, nightclub related. And it's exactly for this one reason. I've owned it for a little over a year now, and in the background I'm gonna showcase some of the insane work I was able to get with it, while I discuss some of my favorite things about this camera. Starting off with number one, the a7S III's insane low light performance. Unreal, unreal, 100% my favorite thing about this camera is its dual native ISO, meaning you're able to shoot at 12,800 ISO with little to no grain at all. It's absurd. In order to take advantage of this dual native ISO, you're going to have to be filming an S-Log3 though. I'll explain what that is and my settings for it further in this video. 80% of all of this footage you're seeing in the back is shot at this 12,800 ISO range in S-Log3, so you'll be able to judge what you think from the footage playing in the background. The reason it's able to shoot at such an absurdly high ISO is naturally due to its low megapixel count. With this sensor only having 12 megapixels, that means each megapixel in the sensor is way bigger, in turn letting in a lot more light. This is something that high-end cinema cameras are known for. We're talking about the Reds, Ari Alexas, and so forth. However, this doesn't mean that the Sony a7S III is horrible for taking photos. Here are some photos that I've taken with it. Coming in at reason number two, we got 4K, 10-bit, 422, 120 frames per second resolution. I mean, that is just out of this world. Especially at the price point of $3,500, this is something that you're not gonna find in a lot of lower-end cameras. The rest is self-explanatory. I don't even have to speak on it anymore. It's just nuts. And if you're enjoying the content playing in the background, I've got a video explaining some of my favorite lenses that are always on the Sony a7S III, and I have full tutorial breakdowns on my entire editing process, how I film, how I edit, and all the effects and strategies I use throughout my video. As for the rest of my favorite features, I'm just going to run through these super quick. We got IBIS in-body image stabilization. Then we got the size, weight, and form factor of the camera. I mean, it's so small, lightweight, and compact, so you can't really beat it. It's a mirrorless camera as well, just like its predecessor, the a7S II, and it blows the autofocus of the a7S II out of the water. I personally think it's up to par with Canon if not better at this point. On top of that, we got dual card slots, 15 stops, a dynamic range, a full frame camera with the ability to switch into APS-C mode, meaning that if you have an 85 millimeter lens on and you just need to reach a little farther, you can go into APS-C mode, it'll multiply the focal length by 1.6 or by two, whatever Sony is, and make it 135 or similar. Despite the drop in quality, I actually use this mode a lot, especially for my Rokinin eight millimeter lens. As for my recording, picture profile settings, I'm usually recording at 4K 60, 10 bit 422 in the S-Log3 picture profile. I'm going to throw my picture profile settings on the screen, but I'll read them out loud to you as well. My settings are as follows. Picture profile 8, black level 0, gamma, S-Log3, black gamma, range middle, level 0, knee, mode auto, color mode S gamut 3 dot cine, saturation zero. As for the S log 3 footage, the way I'm able to bring it to life is using the Joe Famularo Phantom Sony a7S III LUTs, I'll put the name on the screen. This makes it a breeze to grade and you still get all the information out of the 422 10-bit footage. By the way, to my understanding, I believe the only way that you can take advantage of this 12,800 ISO is through S-Log3. I'm not 100% certain on that, but that's what I've been doing and it totally works for me, as far as I'm aware. As for the downsides of this camera, I genuinely love it and it was really difficult for me to think of any other than its price tag. However, when you look at other cameras that are capable of doing what the a7S III is doing, they're either the same and or more expensive. And I know what you're thinking, but what about the low megapixel count? And for me, that honestly can't be seen as a downside as that's the reason it's so good at low light for me, which is exactly what I use this camera for. And not a downside at all, as I'm still able to take phenomenal photos with it, especially if you're someone like me who's just really posting to social media and whatnot. Now, this camera is obviously targeted at professional videographers, people who are going to take advantage 
advantage of its insane features. And let me tell you, if you're ready to step up your game in the nightlife, concert, festival, recap video world, I can 100% confidently say that this camera is a necessity for you. I'm in my senior year of college right now and I'm planning to go on tour once I graduate and this is the camera I'm bringing with me, Sony a7S III. And probably with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens on there too. With that being said, those are the reasons that a7S III will not be leaving my camera bag anytime soon. Let me know in the comments if you're planning to pick up an a7S III or if you already have one. And if you have a personal favorite for nightlife, festival, concert, videography. Other than that, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one, Sunday, 12 a.m. AST. Peace.